for my slides to sum up. Um, good, good afternoon. I'm, I'm very honored to be invited to speak at this event and also very humbled by all the wealth of knowledge around the, the room. Uh, it has already been uh, this first day a um, very enriching experience. So thank you for the invitation and, and for all the participants. Um, before I, I, I start, I just wanted to emphasize that um, the World Health Organization, where I, I work, um, is an organization that is very strongly founded on the, the Western medical science. Uh, all the international standards and guidance that that the World Health Organization puts out are based on very rigorous scientific um, methodologies. Um, but the work of WHO, like work of all UN um, organizations, is also based on international commitments, including international human rights commitments, including the UN Declaration on the, the right, Rights of um, Indigenous Peoples. Um, I just want to say this as a, as a framing uh, for, for um, all of my presentation. Um, what was this? Okay, okay. Continue. Continue. Okay. Um, so at WHO, we take a human rights based approach to the health of indigenous peoples. And that is why um, it is my unit, the human rights unit, that leads um, the work on indigenous peoples within, um, within WHO. But of course, we do it in collaboration with many other units at WHO headquarters in Geneva and with the regional and, and, and country um, offices um, that um, support countries in their disease programs and in strengthening their, their health systems. Um, I see the, the text doesn't show very, very clearly. Um, I, I'm just going to, um, in this presentation, I'm, I'm just going to cover um, WHO commitments and strategies that are already in place that are relevant to the protection and promotion of indigenous people's knowledge in the context of health, um, and then cover some uh, contributions um, to health by indigenous peoples, uh, and also some, some challenges, some examples, um, um, and some opportunities for uh, going, going forward. Um, yes. Text is very very small, but I'm I'm sure these uh, slides will be uh, shared later. Um, well, WHO member states have uh, explicitly recognized the importance of traditional knowledge in promoting health and and well-being, and that recognition is included in several resolutions which have been adopted by um, by WHO member states, um, and which have been then followed by um, technical uh, strategies and initiatives by the WHO Secretariat. Um, the first one I'll, I'll mention is um, 2018 Declaration of, of, of Asana on Primary Health Care. Um, it emphasizes the need to include traditional medicine, knowledge, and technologies in the delivery of primary health care. Um, secondly, WHO has had um, traditional medicine strategies in two, since 2014. And last year, the World Health Assembly, which is composed of all the WHO member states, extended that strategy until 2025. And they also called for WHO to develop a new, new strategy on traditional um, medicine. And the resolution, um, it acknowledges the diversity and contributions of traditional medicine practices to health, well-being, and universal health coverage. And this recognition stresses also the importance of incorporating traditional knowledge into mainstream health systems to ensure people-centered care and equitable access to health services. Um, in 2022, WHO established, um, with the support of government of India, um, a global traditional medicine center as the, as the knowledge hub. This is based in, in, um, in India. And that center has the mission to catalyze ancient wisdom and modern science for the health and well-being uh, of people and, and the planet. 
And that provides an opportunity for indigenous people's medicine and, and, um, and healing practices to be better integrated um, with conventional Western medicine. And in August last year, um, WHO organized the first um, traditional global summit on traditional medicine, and that, that, that took place in, in Gujarat in, in India. Um, there was an exchange of, of um, best practices on, on several areas, um, and there's an outcome document from that summit called um, Gujarat Declaration. And that declaration includes commitments that are related to indigenous knowledge, um, biodiversity um, and traditional complementary and integrative medicine. Um, I have to note that, that a lot of the, the previous work by WHO on, on traditional medicine is not specific to in, indigenous knowledge. Um, a lot of it has focused on, on codified um, um, traditional medicine practices uh, in, in China and, and India. Uh, for example, um, and, but there's a growing recognition of the importance of, of, for WHO to, um, um, to integrate um, indigenous knowledge into its work. Um, and one um, important, very important uh, resolution from World Health Assembly last year uh, was on the health of indigenous people. And this is the first time that WHO has been asked to uh, develop uh, a global plan of action on the health of indigenous peoples. Um, and that same resolution that calls for that global plan of action, um, it also um, um, includes various calls to um, uh, member states um, um, to, um, uh, to explore ways uh, to integrate traditional and complementary medicine services within national or sub-national health systems, particularly at the level of primary health care. There are also calls in that resolution um, to all actors to ensure that rights related to indigenous people's cultural heritage, traditional knowledge and cultural expressions um, and knowledge systems are respected in the context of research and development related to the health of indigenous people. Um, so that's at the, at the global level. Um, the, the region, WHO works in, in, has regional offices uh, in all the different regions, um, and the office um, in the Americas, the Pan American Health Organization, um, has advanced um, a lot more on the promotion and the protection of um, indigenous um, knowledge into, um, into its, its work. Um, also because, um, as uh, Dr. Myrna Cunningham mentioned earlier, in that region, there's a lot more recognition by the member states uh, also of the, the rights of indigenous peoples and the importance of preserving the, the, the knowledge. Um, PAHO has, um, has, a, has, a, has a policy on um, ethnicity and health and a plan of action um, um, which goes from 2019 to 2025. 20, um, I'm mentioning all these uh, different resolutions and commitments and strategies um, because those provide a basis for um, building synergies between indigenous people, knowledge, and other forms of scientific understanding uh, to, to promote better health for, for all. Um, let me just say a few words then about indigenous people's contributions to health in, in general. Um, as everyone in this, this room knows very well, throughout history, Indigenous peoples have been responsible for the development of, of technologies that have significantly contributed to health. And many of the innovations in science, in technology, in medicine, and pharmaceuticals draw um, from traditional knowledge and, and resources. Um, approximately 40% of pharmaceutical products that are used today are derived from, uh, from nature and from traditional knowledge. Um, many well-known medications such as aspirin or artemisinin, which is used for treating malaria uh, and treatments for, for childhood cancer, for example, um, have origins in, uh, in indigenous knowledge. Um, with regards to malaria, indigenous peoples in South America use the park of the, the sinkona tree as the remedy 
for fever caused by, by malaria for, for centuries. And the active ingredient in the, the bark of that, that tree um, was later identified as a highly effective treatment for malaria and was, was used for, um, for a long time um, until, um, and, and was really a breakthrough at, at the time, um, and was used as the anti-malarial medication for, for centuries until newer, newer treatments were, were developed. Studies have also shown that indigenous knowledge systems have been instrumental in addressing health needs um, during public health emergencies, most recently during um, the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And this is very, very relevant also for all the discussions that are currently taking place um, at WHO to nego negotiate um, a pandemic um, a treaty. Um, I think uh, Dr. Mirna Cunningham also mentioned some of the, the work by indigenous um, population in the context of the COVID-19 um, um, uh, pandemic, um, where a lot of the indigenous knowledge was used for, um, for collective efforts to protect food security. Um, and also there was a lot of use of indigenous languages to translate and transmit knowledge um, about the COVID-19 vaccination within, within their, their communities. Um, in the Americas region, Bajo has taken significant step, steps in bringing indigenous knowledge to inform conventional medical approaches through the implementation of a methodology that is called knowledge dialogue methodology. That methodology, um, in, it, it fosters the participation and engagement of both the conventional Western health system and the um, indigenous uh, therapists and, and healers and allows for a more inclusive and, and holistic approach to, to health. And this knowledge dialogue methodology, it has been used in many different health topics, including tuberculosis, trachoma, uh, maternal health, um, uh, including through the implementation of a tool that promotes culturally safe childbirth. Um, we are now at WHO headquarters discussing with our colleagues in, in PAHO about how we can bring this methodology also to, to other uh, WHO regions and how it could be um, applied in other health conditions, for example, um, HIV, malaria, and, and, and others. Let me just say a few words about the, the challenges. Um, despite the, the efforts by indigenous peoples to protect their cultural heritage and, and systems of knowledge and, and know-how, and despite all the, the, the re resilience, um, they are facing significant challenges in safeguarding and preserving the traditional knowledge, um, especially in the, in the context of, of, of health. And a lot of these challenges are rooted in historical injustice and discrimination and uh, legacies of colonialism and the continuing cultural colonialism, colonialism and power imbalances that also exist in, in organizations um, such as um, mine, un unfortunately. Um, and one of these challenges is the, the lack of res um, recognition and respect for the value of the of traditional um, knowledge, which is often marginalized or disregarded within health systems um, and not accepted as evidence-based. Um, and this is why at the start of my presentation, I, I mentioned this is a big challenge for WHO that is very much um, based on, on um, a Western um, medical science uh, approach. Um, and I, I remember there were earlier um, some issues um, discussed in context of, of data and collection of, of data. Uh, often we only accept certain type of data and which is collected in a certain way and presented in a, in a certain, certain manner. So this is, a, this is a challenge that also perpetuates a cycle of marginalization and uh, undermines the, the ability of indigenous people to shape their own health outcomes and also to contribute to, to global, um, global health efforts. And another um, problem is the, um, um, the appropriation and misuse of indigenous knowledge by non-indigenous actors 
and whether it's for commercial gain, academic purpose, or personal interest, um, indigenous knowledge is, is frequently um, co-opted um, without proper acknowledgement um, or compensation. Um, um, and I wanted to also mention that indigenous women uh, often have additional barriers because of the discrimination they face both as indigenous and as, as, as women. Um, I had a slide here on regulatory frameworks, um, but I'll skip over this um, because there has already been recognition that these frameworks exist um, in, in text, um, but often um, in, oh, I'm, I'm out of time. Um, okay, let me just um, quickly um, just mention a couple of um, opportunities um, going forward. So WHO is uh, developing the two uh, major strategies. Um, one is on the traditional medicine, and the other one is the, the Global Plan of Action on the Health of Indigenous Peoples. Um, and these are great opportunities to in, in incorporate Indigenous um, knowledge um, and intercultural approaches to, to health um, in the work of, of WHO. And I apologize for going over time. Thank you very much. <laughs>